Hey YouTube, my name is Albert. Welcome to my very first video which I created for the Rockler Hobby Challenge. I built an audio and record player shelving unit to replace an old IKEA shelving unit and I incorporated a drawer as well as some vinyl storage. I had the lumber store cut down the 4 by 8 sheets of Baltic birch so I can fit them in my car. Then at home I cut them relatively to length and I glued up two panels to get one and a half inch thickness. Once that was dried, I went ahead and cut them to length. Three shelves for the audio components will be 43 by 15 and 3 quarters and the record player shelf will be 64 inches by 15 and 3 quarters. Here I'm making some handles on the underside of the bottom shelf and then I'm just drilling some holes, 3 quarter inch holes for the supports, the dowels I'll be making. Uh, I just used 2 by 2 poplar for the supports and I will be putting the dowels 1 inch into the support and 1 inch into the shelf. I'm using 5 16 isolation spikes for the top shelf. I want to get a smooth finish on the support so I'm using aqua coat to fill the wood grain. I sanded the wood up to 320 and then in between coats I use 320 softly to knock down any bumps. Then I use 1800 and a fine pad and then I finish with wet sanding with 3600 grit and that gave me a pretty smooth finish. And I finish with semi gloss white and that came out pretty good. I finish the underside of the shelves and the edges with polyurethane. I use 3 quarter inch dowels, uh, 2 inch length then run it off the uh, end. Here I'm gluing up the supports for the top shelf. Spent a lot of time on those supports finished so I'm using a cloth trying to not to mess it up. Use the dowel to drive it in. I'll try to make sure that it's relatively straight and then use some epoxy for the isolation spike threaded insert. I use a screw instead of the spike so I can drive the insert all the way into the hole and then I replace it with the actual spike. So the spikes will help isolate the top shelf and reduce unwanted vibration and jitter noise. Overall the finish on the supports and the top shelf turned out pretty good. Here I'm just finding the center of the spike so I can place the discs for the spikes. Then I can just drill a shallow inlay for the disc. And I will use epoxy to secure the discs in place. and luckily they came out accurate. Once I got the disc onto the middle shelf, I can glue up the middle shelf to the bottom shelf. Once the glue dries up, I can remove the protective paper from the top of the shelves. Um, and pretty much the equipment shelves are almost done. I'm quite happy with the way they turned out. Definitely a lot better than the IKEA shelves that I'm replacing. The double plywood um, will help minimize any bowing in the middle of these shelves. They are 43 inches long, so they're quite long. Uh, so they're, they're pretty sturdy and, and heavy, actually. I just have to add the casters. And uh, this part of the project is done. I chose double wheel casters because I have carpet, and I figure that uh, this might roll better on carpet. Single wheels might be dig too much into the carpet. Uh, two of the wheels have brakes, but I uh, don't really need them in the carpet. But I may not have carpet always, so I figured uh, the brakes might come in handy at some point. This part of the shelving unit weighs in at about 60 pounds, so they turned out quite sturdy. So now that the equipment shelves are done, I can focus on the record shelving. Um, pre-drill the cable holes. I'm incorporating some vinyl 
storage on the shelf. So I got some quarter inch stainless steel rod and uh, used the uh, pipe from one of my pipe clamps to bend uh, the rods uh, on this jig that I created. I'm using Rockler shelf support sleeves, um, but I had to file off the back uh, lip because um, I want to insert the rods an inch into the shelves and those sleeves are only 3 8 inch deep. So uh, once I filed those I used the Rockler shelves support uh, jig to place my holes on the shelf uh, and then insert the sleeves and drove the rods an uh, inch into the shelf and they came out quite quite solid uh, they, there's really no play in them uh, so they came out pretty good turntables can be susceptible to vibrational noise and so I put some anti-vibration material on top of the 2x4 supports there uh, the, the shelf is quite heavy it's uh, 64 inches long it's about uh, 45 pounds came out pretty good if the shelves done I can work on the vinyl display wall I just cut down some 2 by 6s down to about 1 and 3 16 by 1 and 3 quarters I'm using keyholes horizontal keyholes to hold the boards to the wall rounding over the ends and the front edge and then cutting a dado slightly at an angle where the records will rest I actually rounded over the front edge after I cut the dado. Um, I got two of these out of the two by six. I cut the two by six in half and then uh, cut down to size. Uh, they came out pretty good. I made three of these. Two are 54 inches long and one is 40 inches long. So at this point I did some sanding down to about probably 320 and uh, then just sprayed them with semi-gloss white and uh, probably did above four coats. Uh, I wasn't looking to fill all the wood grain on these uh, but I still got a, a nice finish. Uh, installation was pretty straightforward. I made sure that I checked the keyholes before I did all the finishing. Uh, so they aligned where I needed them to align and so at this point uh, the installation was pretty straightforward and they came out pretty good they're quite solid on the wall the top two hold four records and the bottom holds three um, I, I like the idea of displaying vinyl record covers I think some of them are very artistic and I like the way they look I looked at a lot of different displays uh, but they're quite expensive uh, at least 10 times more expensive than cutting these out of a 2x6 so I'm quite happy with the way this this turned out next I can start working on the vinyl accessories drawer that will also help cover the 2x4 supports of the shelf I decided to cut a 30 degree angle on the bottom of the drawer front so I can use it as a pull uh, the bottom edge as a pull. Uh, some of these holes I, I drilled too deep and so I had to use washers with the Craig screws. Um, I started to lose my focus in this part of the project and uh, made some mistakes here. You're going to see that I cut the bottom too wide and too short so have to run back to the store and get some more material recut the bottom and uh, here I'm just make three holes here for the drawer front and um, I wanted to keep the drawer away from the turntable shelf so instead of screwing the drawer onto the shelf support I put some two by twos underneath the two by fours and actually attach the drawer to the two by twos. Uh, the, you can see there's a gap there and I'm um, trying to minimize uh, creating noise with the drawer opening and closing the drawer um, 
the stylus of the turntable is quite sensitive and it picks up a lot of noise. Actually, it came out pretty good. I used to put all this stuff around the top of the shelf, and so now I have a place to put everything away, and it makes it a lot more organizing. And now I can work on the last part of the project, which is the wall vinyl storage, which I borrowed from Ben Uyeda, uh his modular French cleat furniture system. Uh, if you haven't seen Ben's uh, videos, it's unbelievable. Uh, the stuff that he creates. He's got to be one of the most creative people out there. Uh, in any case, uh, this is my first video and I'm going to screw the support um, with two screws from the bottom and then that support will screw from the back to the vertical hanger. Uh, you'll see here. Here you, go. you can see here I screwed that support with three screws to the vertical hanger and then I'm adding two more screws to the vertical hanger directly to the bottom shelf. So I've got uh, quite a few screws on here and I, I think that uh, it should be strong enough. The records can be quite heavy and uh, these shelves here can hold at least 20 records. So um, I wanted to make sure I, I made them strong enough so they don't tilt or lean forward um, with the weight of the records. So I basically this is uh, what the unit looks like. Uh, I made three of these. Uh, two are a bit uh, have more depth than the third, and that's because the third one goes in the very corner, and I didn't want to do it uh, as deep as the others because it would block the vinyl display there at the corner. So. Uh, actually it actually came out really good. I, I really like Ben's design um, and uh, I now have plenty of storage for my records. Uh, before I was just storing them next to uh, my speaker, just leaning on, on the speaker uh, on the side of the components uh, with the IKEA rack and so this really helps uh, create more space and I can uh, Organize my record. So he, here it is. This is this is the entire project um, that started with the shelves for the components, three shelves, and then the isolation shelf for the turntable, the drawer below it there, I'm actually quite happy. I can put two components next to each other on the IKEA rack. I can only put one component per shelf. The incorporated vinyl storage here actually came out really good. I uh, wasn't sure. I never worked with the steel, uh, bending the steel rods and uh, they came out pretty good. And also the drawer for all of my accessories now I, I used to keep all of those on top of the shelf and uh, now I can put them all away and keep my things a little bit more organized. So uh, uh, quite happy with the, the drawer. It also helps cover the support for the shelf. And of course the vinyl wall display, which I cut out of two by sixes and came out, they came out pretty good. And then finally the vinyl storage on the wall. So this is my project. Uh, I was able to replace my old IKEA shelving, which uh, was was not very uh, efficient anymore, and it was quite old. And uh, built this DIY audio vinyl entertainment center, I suppose. So, in any case, uh, thank you very much for watching my first video. And uh, have a great day. Peace out.